what is going on guys, this is Induce Ryan here, back for another commentary in Forza Horizon 3. I gotta stop calling my videos commentary because nearly all my videos is time to become commentaries now. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to be doing probably my first ever sleeper car build since Forza Horizon 3 came out. Don't know when the last time I've done one of these was, definitely in Forza Motorsport 6. But, I remember in Forza Motorsport 6, my first one was on the... Volvo 123 GT, something like that. But anyway, we're starting it off with another Volvo, the 1972 Volvo 1800E, which is in fact the new barn find. I really like what Playground Games has done, giving us a brand new barn find car every month when a new car pack comes out. So like I said in the last video, I don't know much about Volvo, but what I do know about this car is that the 1800E, it comes from the P1800 family, with this particular model featuring a 1986cc B20B four-cylinder engine, I believe, and it produces 130 horsepower. So it doesn't sound like a real lot, but it's actually one of the more higher models in the P1800 class of Volvos. And i got to say, I really like it. So what we're going to do, obviously, is... We're going to fully upgrade everything, engine swap, engine swap, alright, so which gives us more power? Of course, this one. Engine swap, uh, will we give it four-wheel drive? Uh, I think we should give it four-wheel drive only, so that it doesn't spin out when we're going corners, and so we get more acceleration. So yeah, give everything an upgrade, no tuning, and I might also give this thing a paint job, and change the colour as it looks a little boring. Yeah, I'll change the front bumper, a wing, mm, it'll slow it down a bit though, no, I won't add a wing, forget it. Yeah, I'll add that rear bumper to match the front bumper. Oh, why do I keep doing that? Oh, I did it again. Tires, uh, race tire compound, tire width, 350 millimeters. Clutch. Just pretty much upgrade everything except for the differential. Give it as much power as we can. Actually, yeah, I forgot we don't need a differential. Because I'm not a big fan of tuning. We don't really need a tune when we're doing a sleeper car build. Never did it when doing the 123 GT about a year ago in Forza Motorsport 6. Ah. Uh, yeah, let's give it race. Race weight reduction. Sounds a bit weird saying that. Of course, we upgrade all of these, and once we get to the end of it, we'll see how much power we got. Uh, exhaust. Faster. Launch is nearly at 10 maximum. That's good. Alright, yeah, the launch is officially at 10. Can we get the acceleration up there? Alright. Race turbo. Right, we got a speed of 8.0 now. Can we get 8.1? Nope. Yeah, we got a speed of 8.0 and a launch of 10. Now, how much power do we have? 568 kilowatts. Pretty good. It's about 750 horsepower. Let's buy it all. I remember we got to about, I think it was 800 horsepower, the 123 GT. I don't know. But anyway, now we're going to add a paint job. Just because I feel like it. Just to suit the mojo. So let's go into the paint store. Alright, so first things first, before we make our own paint job, we're going to select a different colour. Because this car makes it look, well, like a sleeper. But we're going to turn into a sportier car. I could have it in dark green, but red makes it look sportier. With a black hood. Yep. Uh, uh, we can't paint the wing because we don't have one. Rims. Uh, do we have black rims or red rims? Dark red. And black windows. Black tinted windows. Sweet. Alright. Alrighty, it's looking like a race car. Now we just gotta add some decals. Which might be a bit boring. And yes, if I can, I'm gonna try and upload the uh, paint job so you guys can buy it. That is, if you like it. And if this thing will save... Alright, there we go. Apply decals, so I'm not gonna record, I'm not gonna show the entire thing because it's probably gonna be boring, but 
course we start off with stripes double stripe so let's thinen it and lengthen it all the way to the end all the way across move it across so where are we gonna stamp another one and have it like a double stripe no white in the middle just the red color and it goes hopefully it doesn't look too weird out it goes through the black hood but I kind of like how it goes right in between the little logo. That means it's right in the middle. Alright. Oh, maybe they're a bit too... They're, they, I just thought they were a bit too thick. Yep, yeah, that looks good. What do you think? Alright, so now we move on to the side. And what I want to do is... I want to make... A sleeper badge so of course we need yeah these letters look good s big s and then the lower letters for the l and etc now we need 40 in 40 in width and maybe 43 in height or 40 in height yep that looks good let's move it all right Time for the L. Oh, that's right. We need lower, small L. So, what was it? Uh, diagonal 30. 30 in length. Oh, no, I'm, I think I'm getting it mixed up. I'm not sure. Well, let me just double check. Yeah, I knew it. It was 30, 30 in width and 40 in length. Got it the wrong way around. Alright. Looks good. So now, I'll just fast forward the rest, just to not bore you guys, and I'll see you afterwards. Okay, so before we finish off with the side, I'd like to add a racing stripe, just to make it more look even more sportier. Yep, everything in black, just black and red. The rims, the hood, the stripes. Is that long enough? Ah, oh, we don't want to mess up the shape too much. Uh, that look alright? Yeah, that looks fine. I like it. Now all we got left to do is do the other side. And I'll see you after that. Alright, so the paint job's finally finished on the other side, and now I'm finally ready to drive. First time I've ever done a paint job with a build. But does, this does this mean I'll be doing a paint job for every single build I do? No. Not even every sleeper build. Well, if I ever do one. I don't know, maybe. I might do one on every sleeper car build. On an old car like this one, like if I were to do one on, let's say, the uh, Willys Jeep, I couldn't do it. But if I were to do one on, let's say, an old Mercedes, like the 1954 SL Galwing, yes, I could definitely put a design on that. Because I remember driving that in Forza Horizon 1, I had it in green with a uh, with some sort of fiery effect next to it. I know that sounds weird. I just did it. It looked very cool, in my opinion. Because that was one of the barn finds in Forza Horizon 1, I can remember. But as for this car, this dri car's driving really well. Not as fast as the Volvo 123 GT from uh, Forza, Horizon, Forza Motorsport 6, but this one can corner better, so it handles a bit better, and I'm generally surprised. And I just did a drift, and it was okay, but... Uh, and that car just stuffed it up. Sorry, I'm gonna have to rewind, guys. 
already my newly paint job. My first ever sleeper car paint job. Ruined. I don't want that. I have no idea where I'm gonna go in this thing. Just basically keep following this road. Down to the jungle. Or are we gonna go through the sea? Or through the Yarrow Valley? We'll see. Forgot it. Every time I'm doing one of these, I always forget about those speed traps. I always forget to go as fast as I can through them, because I just went through one now. And I should be going through them. I should be going through speed traps in a car like this. Or even speed zones. There are times where I really suck at driving as fast as I can through those speed cameras. Ever since Forza Horizon 1. Though, I think in Forza Horizon 1, I appreciate them, that's the word, a little bit more than I do in, did in number 2, and more than I do in number 3. And the only reason for that is because there's now more to do in Forza Horizon 3, like there's drift zones and danger signs, and you can now drive off-road. So that's why Forza Horizon 1, that's what Forza Horizon 1 lacked. So they can't everything. They can't have everything all at once in the first game, or else they'll run out of ideas for their second one. So I'm fine with it. Getting a bit out of control there. Can you believe that? An old red Volvo with black stripes and a sleeper badge on the side. And yeah, this paint job will be available. No, we're not going to take the drift zone. I nearly was, but I decided, nah, we're not in a drift car. Uh, but yeah, this paint, oh, we gotta rewind. Love the look of that front. Anyway, the paint job for this car will be available, will be available for anyone to install their Volvo 1800E, if you want it. And as for the inside, it looks okay. But the inside doesn't really matter in this video. It's the outside that looks good, and it performs really well. I think, I must say, this is one of the best sleeper cars I've ever built. And now you're probably thinking, okay, then why am I making it look bad by driving it badly, understeer and all that? Well, that's normal for a sleeper car. To me, it handles fairly well for an old four-wheel drive car that goes fast. So I'm just going to take a quick photo for the thumbnail. I'll be right back. Alright, so I just took the photo, expected to see it as the thumbnail. And what's more, I've just decided what we're going to do. So we're going to drive to the Outback, the airport, and I'm going to try and find an online free room session and do a drag race with this thing. Never done that ever in a video. Like, you know, I only just started doing... Right, I think I only just started... No, wait. I've been doing that since Forza Horizon 2 Storm Island. Alright, so we're going to drive up... We're going to drive up to here. Set a route up there, and then we'll stop the test drive and and take it out for real this time on a drag race. Never done that. Haven't done many sleeper car builds. I think I did a few in Forza Horizon 2, and I did a couple in Forza Motorsport 6. Never did a drag race. So this is the first time where I do an actual race at the very end. Mate, I don't know if I should start doing any drift builds. Probably not. I just, I really like the idea. But we don't know what cars we're going to be up against. We might be up against a car that's a lot slower than this, maybe even a stock version of this. Or a car that's even faster than this, like the Bugatti Veyron. So that's why we're just going to set it in this particular class. So I'm going to find an online free run session now. And for now, I'll just... Oh, there it is. I'll see you after I've found it. Okay, so I'm finally just about to start a drag race. Took like 10 minutes for me to find one. But anyway, we're up against a Mercedes AMG. S1 class like mine. Uh, Subaru BRZ, that's S2 class, so... Don't know how fast they are when they're fully upgraded. And a GMC Cyclone. They're pretty fast when fully upgraded, so I'm not sure about it. And what a start from the Volvo. And the GMC. Oh, that, that Ute is mighty. That pickup is mighty. I don't think we're going to catch up. I think it's going to be second place unless that Subaru behind us will catch me. I don't know. At least it's an S1 car being an S2 car. That's pretty cool. Okay, so cross the line. 
Volvo comes second, the GMC Cyclone wins. We did that in 24.891 seconds. That's pretty good. We've just proven that a sleeper car Volvo can beat an S2 car, and it can do it in under 30 seconds. I'm really proud of this car. And that wraps up this video. So if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Like I said in the last video, commenting, giving your feedback to me, keeps me motivated to keep making videos. Alright, so what prize did we win? 70,000 credit, not bad. But I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'm Induce Rhino. Bye-bye.